I'm sure you've probably noticed, but reboots and remakes have become very prominent these days. But hey, this is hardly a new trend. Going back to the days when arcades were at the height of their popularity, many games were completely redesigned when they made the trip home to consoles. Since its first appearance in 1987, one of my absolute favorite series from Capcom has been rebuilt and rebooted from the ground up several times on different platforms. From the arcades all the way to the PlayStation 3, let's take a look at Bionic Commando. Now, I'm sure when most people hear the name Bionic Commando, their mind instantly leaps to the NES classic. Hey, I know mine does, and for good reason, but let's back up a minute, because that's not where this story begins. After a string of arcade hits for Capcom, it was up to game designer Takuro Fujiwara to follow up on the success of both Ghosts and Goblins and Commando with yet another new original title. Expanding on the idea of grappling hooks, a gameplay mechanic that he previously played with in a game called Rock and Rope, Fujiwara delivered Top Secret in 1987. In Top Secret, you play as an unnamed soldier with spiky blue hair that has been sent behind enemy lines to take out a mechanized army intent on world destruction. Parachuting into a forest on the outskirts of their base, our hero fights through five levels on his way to stop a missile launch. Hey, it's an arcade game. What more do you want? What made Top Secret unique, much to the confusion of gamers at the time, was the complete removal of the ability to jump. Instead, the player is equipped with a robotic arm that extends and attaches to platforms and ceilings, allowing you to pull yourself up or swing across gaps. Later that year, Capcom decided to bring Top Secret to the US, but I guess they felt it needed a rebranding to spark interest. A quick redesign of the main character sprite, and this unnamed soldier became Super Joe and the game became Bionic Commando, a follow-up to one of Capcom's biggest hits. Equipped with his trusty grappling hook arm, Joe can easily climb and swing, giving you quite a bit of mobility. However, due to the nonlinear progression of screen scrolling, your situation can easily erupt into absolute chaos. Actually, the screen can get so full of enemies that it becomes near impossible to maneuver without touching anything bad. Sure, it's a quarter muncher, but it's rare to see a game try to take your money this fast. I personally have only ever seen the arcade game in one arcade in my life, and I don't think I've really ever heard anyone talk about this game with any sort of kindness. But to be honest, it's just not that good of a game. At least in my opinion. But the important thing is that the seeds were laid for a vastly superior game. A year after the arcade release, and following what was becoming a trend, Bionic Commando arrived home on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Sharing the same name and base gameplay, everything else was completely different, and way better. In this rendition, Super Joe has been captured by an enemy force called the Bads, and is up to a new Bionic Commando, that's you, to rescue him. I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but let me tell you, everything has been improved tenfold from the arcade game. Use of the Bionic Arm has been reworked and expanded considerably. A crucial change being that it now extends diagonally by default. This is helpful because it allows you to retain a constant forward movement while grappling. In addition, you can deploy the claw immediately as you let go from its current attachment. So what this means is you can now chain your swings together. The complete exhilaration of Tarzaning from ledge to ledge over a bottomless chasm is something that almost no game has been able to replicate ever since. As you progress through various stages, you'll acquire all kinds of new items and weapons needed to access future areas. And in between stages, you'll sometimes run into these supply trucks, which leads to an overhead run and gun segment that strengthens its connection to the original Commando game. You start off weak, it only takes one hit to kill you. 
but as you defeat enemies, they drop these little bullets. Pick up enough of them, and you get additional hit points. As the game's difficulty rises, your power level scales with it perfectly. The soundtrack is one of the absolute best to ever grace the NES, and if you know their pedigree in the 8-bit years, you know that's really saying something. Of course, these days, everybody knows about the climax of this game. Hitler, it, I mean, Master D, is resurrected and ultimately gets his head blown up with a well-placed bazooka shot. Bonnet Commando is one of my absolute favorite games on the NES. The total package, and it's only gotten more revered in the years since its release. It was actually much better received in the US than it was in Capcom's home country. So it wouldn't be until 1992 that the series would see the light of day again. This time on Nintendo's popular Game Boy Portable. This Bionic Commando retells pretty much the same story as the NES version. But this time, everything has been glossed up with a healthy dose of futuristic 90s style anime attitude. And it's pretty great. And at last, the main character finally gets an official name in the US. Rad Spencer. Now that is a great name. Following the same gameplay and structure of the NES game, the similarities are immediately apparent the second you press start. However, all the levels are completely new. There seems to be an even deeper focus on challenging swinging, so even real pros of the NES game will have some trouble here. There's some insanely tricky segments popping up as you near the end of the game. It's pretty amazing just how much game they were able to cram in here. For a portable title, there's just a ton of levels. Thankfully, they included a password system, a feature that the NES game sorely needed. The password screen also has about the happiest music I've ever heard. It's awesome. Unfortunately, as quickly as Bionic Commando returned to our lives, it faded away once again. There was a blip on the radar in 1999 with the release of a Game Boy Color game called Bionic Commando Elite Forces. Bionic Commando. Commando. Developed by Nintendo's American-based NST, of all people, this strange title had little to do with the setting and world of any previous games in the series. But then, the series would go silent for nearly a decade. Bionic Commando. A series barely alive. They have the technology. They can make it better than it was. Stronger. Faster. After years of silence, a Swedish development team named Grin showed interest in reviving the series on modern hardware. In 2008, Bionic Commander Rearmed appeared as a downloadable game on PSN, Xbox Live Arcade, and Steam. Built from the ground up with amazing 2.5D graphics, refined and streamlined gameplay, a great sense of humor, and an awesome updated soundtrack. Rearmed received rave reviews across the board, and fans were thrilled at the amount of care, attention, and respect that Grin had given it. It would go on to become the poster child for the modern remake of a retro game. But Rearmed served another purpose. It included new characters, plot points, and information that would pay off in a brand new title for the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC, titled, once again, Bionic Commando. Let me tell you about the man I met when I was still young. Ten years ago, our country faced the greatest threat it had ever known. The FSA was attacked by the Imperials, a military group of fascists who respected nothing not even the laws of life and death. This restart, reboot, continuation, whatever of Bionic Commando finally takes the action 3D and it's... Wait, Spencer? What, what have they done to you? If you're a fan of the series, your heart immediately sank when you saw the completely awful main character redesign. Who is responsible for this? It's completely detached from everything that existed before. 
Thankfully, Grin saw fit to include an original style skin for longtime fans. But for the sake of staying close to the intended vision, I'll be using the original look here. This is gonna hurt. Let's do it. I'm sorry, I can't do this. That's better. All right, let's try that again. Bionic Commando finally takes the action fully 3D and it's pretty good. Optimizing the swinging mechanic in a three-dimensional space was obviously the focus of the game and the biggest hurdle for the developers to overcome. Thankfully, they seem to nail this, which makes swinging generally feel delightful and fluid. A reticle is always on screen showing if your bionic arm is able to attach to surfaces that are nearby. To my surprise, I found that you could attach it to just about anything once you get into a groove. Attach, swing, release. Get this down and you feel like you can do anything. Sometimes these swing spots are just out of reach and the only way to get close enough is using another series first, the ability to jump. While this almost feels like it's betraying the original philosophy of the gameplay, it's a necessary addition when you have three dimensions to worry about. The story is some garbage about experimental weapons in the hands of a terrorist group. But what plays out is a completely nonsensical story where just about every character comes off as incredibly unlikable and culminates in one of the dumbest plot twists in gaming history. All right, now that I've gotten that off my chest, I do have to say that despite some issues, I thought there was a lot to like about this reboot. It's got some really great orchestrated versions of the NES game's music, some nice action set pieces, and I got really into how decidedly old school some of the design decisions were. And you know what? It's just a lot of fun to play. Based on the conversations I've had, I actually seem to be one of the few people that I know that actually like the game. Bionic Commander was also critically panned from multiple sources, almost killing the series once again. Let's see you come back from the <laughs> Attempting to salvage what was left of the series' popularity, Bionic Commando Rearmed 2 hit the download stores in 2011. At first looking to be a return to form, unfortunately it didn't quite end up the hit that Capcom was hoping for. Some questionable decisions, such as adding the ability to jump, seemed to rub fans the wrong way. They could forgive it in a fully 3D game, but a traditional 2D playing game is a different story. Despite high hopes, Rearm 2 ended up a flop. Four games, all with the name Bionic Commando. Has there ever been a series with so many entries that have the exact same title on the box? No numbers, no subtitles, just the name. I have no idea if the series will ever return again, but if it does, there's a pretty good chance it'll be a reboot titled simply Bionic Commando. Bionic Commando.